Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Toxic Biohazard, and one of the coolest things about this synth is that the filter is based off the Moog ladder filter. So with that being said, it might be fun to make a Moog base with a little bit of distortion, and since we're in FL anyway, we always have access to the Easy Arp in here in the gear setting, so this is what we're going to be making today. And with some drums. And one of the cool things as well is that we can always crank this resonance and then we have kind of an acid base. So it's kind of two patches in one, right? We can have that Moog if we kind of move our cutoff, drop down a resonance. Or again, like we could have an acid base. So yeah, it's a pretty easy patch to make, very fun. And the cool part about Toxic Biohazard, like I said, is the filter and then also the drive. You're supposed to the drive off a little bit. So we were about right there. Okay, so let's get into it here. Let's go to the other instance of Biohazard and go to a new preset. So reset program. And we're left with an inspiring sine wave. Okay, so first things first, let's change our sign to a square, which is the first one is kind of fine as well there. You can try the round square. That kind of gives you just a little bit of a different tone, but I found the square is kind of nice as well. So we're going to drop this down by one octave here. So we have this. Let's increase our master a little bit. So we have a square down an octave, and then basically we're going to be using two saws. So these next two are going to be saws. So let's turn these on and let's change them to their saws. The second oscillator is going to be down an octave as well. And then we're going to change the fine tuning a little bit on the last one by about four cents, just to get a little bit of differences here. And then we're going to bring all these in the mix here. So 100% for all of these, something like that right here. So that's going to be our main sound to work with. And for this, let's change our poly instead of mono, because mono is not going to necessarily re-trigger our envelopes. We want to use one for this. So we still essentially have mono, but we are, it's basically going from legato and mono, if that makes any sense. So anyway, moving on from that, now we kind of need to dial in our envelope a little bit here. So here we have a little bit of a, an attack just to kind of remove a little bit of that clickiness. We're going to drop our decay down and then our sustain is going to be a little bit lower like that. And then also increase our release to kind of match the decay as well. So we have something kind of like that. Okay, so now let's go to our filter here and let's go to the low pass. And for the cutoff, we're going to kind of keep it down kind of low, something like that. Our resonance may be around 15, 16%, depending on if you want to do an acid thing or if you want to do kind of more of a Moog thing, really up to you. So now we have almost like a boring low end kind of no definition thing and this is where the filter envelope comes in handy so this envelope generator envelope filter whatever you want to call this knob basically the envelope is controlling the filter for our cutoff so we're going to have a pretty healthy amount here because we wanted to open up the filter a good amount so our attack is going to be basically zero our sustain is going to be zero as well and then decay and release are going to be substantially low something kind of like this so we can kind of get that pluckiness And this is really up to you and your taste, kind of how you want that. Maybe something like that would be fine. And then we're going to add a little bit of chorus here. And always, as I say, be, be careful with chorus on basses because it's a cool effect if it's a very small dose. But the more you add to it, the more you're kind of going to be losing a little bit of definition. So kind of keep that in mind. So we're going to kind of keep it down here. So listen to the difference with and without this chorus here. It's subtle, but it does add a little bit of pizzazz. So here's kind of exaggerated if we did something like this. And that could be fine. That could be a sound that you're going for, but I tend to kind of use a little bit with caution. Maybe something kind of like that. So to get a little bit more of this low end here, we're going to turn on our EQ and boost a good amount of 62. You get that nice, just low end there, that meat. So without the EQ, and with. Okay, 
Okay, so let's increase our master just a little bit here. And now we want to add that drive. Let me back up our master a little bit there. So that's a pretty decent spot here. And depending on how much of that attack, that clickiness you want, that's going to be kind of where you want to dial this, this uh, filter right here, or this envelope here. Maybe you want something a little bit more round. But that's the kind of idea there. Okay, so basically from here, let's kind of bring down that 62. That's kind of a little excessive. Okay, so anyway, now we want to add a little bit of delay, and this one's kind of interesting too, because we are on 1 over 16 here, so let's turn this on, go to sync 1 over 16, and then the mix is going to be kind of low, and then the blur is basically almost all the way. We're kind of just giving it a little bit more spatialness, a little more dimension, I guess. So that is basically the overall recipe in that sense. And what's really cool is that since we're in FL, we always have this gear icon and go to the wrench and we have our built-in ARP, which is really nice. So let's say we go downwards and maybe a range of two, something like that. And we hold down a note. We have a pretty easy ARP to kind of work with here. So basically adding these different kinds of tonality to this kind of sound is really going to be in the cutoff, the resonance and the filter amount. Those, these three knobs are going to be basically your sculpting knobs to work with. You can also add a little bit of key tracking. It kind of goes a long way. The higher you, you up go, the higher up on the keys you go, the more the filter is going to open up. So a little bit can go a long way. So maybe a little bit can, can be nice. I think, yeah, I did that here on uh, this patch. Here's 22%. So let's go ahead and match that 22%. So here we're kind of still in that almost that ARP, Moog, bass, ARP kind of thing. ARP, Moog, bass, ARP. You know what I'm saying? So we have a nice sound to it, especially when the drums are in here. And that delay in the background just by itself with the drums and the bass, it's kind of noticeable, but kind of not at the same time. The more that you add elements in, it kind of just opens up the mix a little bit. So if you like it, cool. If you'd like it, if you don't like it, you can always disable that. It's kind of a thing just I kind of like adding a little bit to some of my basses just to kind of give it a little bit, a little bit more something else. <laughs> Okay, so based upon that, if we like these settings here, then we can always save it like this. So if you want to quickly turn it into an acid base, that's where we do want to crank up the resonance. And then kind of move the cutoff to where we like it. And what's kind of nice if you're doing some kind of acidy sounds, you can always put a little bit of reverb on it. And let's actually change this to a dirty plate. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now we have a little bit of verb. It can really bring it out. Yeah, that's kind of just how you have a lot of fun with that sound. So the cutoff resonance envelope amount and a little bit of decay change you can always do as well to add some nice pizzazz to that. So yeah, hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully you followed along because it's also much nicer to kind of do it yourself and really kind of hone in the sound that you like to kind of get a lot of those aha moments moving some of these knobs, which is a lot of fun. But if you'd like to get the patch for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. And keep in mind with the FL synths, I don't like saving them inside this menu here. I think it's a little bit more difficult to keep track of. So I do save it within the wrapper. So yeah, if you want to load it, you're going to have to load it through the wrapper here by clicking the presets. And you know how to load presets. Hopefully you drop this down. You, you should know that by now. But anyway, I save it in the wrapper and not in this main menu. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.